right, well hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. Yeah, and I got a vlog planned out for you guys. I want to tell you guys something that happened, though. I was eh, being a little bit careless, you know, rolling around my office in my office chair because, you know, it's fun. And I had a bunch of mods in my hand and I pushed my chair back from my desk and my DSLR camera was sitting here on its tripod on this stool because I was setting up to shoot the vlog and I ran fucking right into it, knocked my DSLR camera off of the tripod and I tried to catch it and it just thunk, it hit the ground really hard. The back screen, the back LCD screen seems to be non-functioning anymore so I can't see how long segments are running anymore. I'm gonna need to set up a system so that I, you know, so that I can shoot video and then get this camera fixed, you know, so I can shoot video in the meantime. I usually look at the screen to tell me how long my segments are. I see a little countdown happening on the screen so I can go, okay, well the beer segment is going to be seven minutes long because that's what's going to fit in the vlog and now I, I can't, I can't see it. I, I can't see it at all. I was really unprepared for this and I have nothing in place. So I think I got it all set up okay. I hope it looks okay. I hope it's angled okay. This is a lot of like uh, set it up and look through the viewfinder and make sure things are, make sure things are in focus and ah, it's just a bummer. It's such a dumb thing to do. I should have known that it was set up. I do it the same way every time. But anyway, Welcome to the vlog. We're back here on the couch. I finally got some good lighting for this part of the room, so hopefully it looks a lot better, but welcome. Welcome to the vlog. And last week I did it, and this week I'm going to do it again. Everything right here. All of the timestamps are going to be right here at this particular moment. You'll probably notice that there's no reviews for things that never got reviews. I'm honestly not sure what I'm going to do with that segment. I really like that idea of reviewing something that's maybe a little bit older that really never got on camera. I really like the idea of doing that because there's a lot of products that I think are really great that I use pretty frequently and then for one reason or another, timing and traveling and stuff like this, they just don't get their own YouTube video and I want to give them their own YouTube video. I like the idea of that. I'm just sure, I'm just not sure it's, a, it's such a great fit for this vlog. The vlog as it stands is very packed. There's a lot going on as far as segments in here and so you know that one might be beh, at least this week for sure just because stuff that that segment for sure this week is not going to be in the vlog but everything else everything else is going to be here. We got retro vaping and beer and viewer mails and vape mail and stuff like that. In fact I just got some mail just today. I was worried. I was like I only have two packages to open for the vape mail segment and luckily UPS and DHL came through for me and now we have a little bit of more fun stuff to play with. But anyway, before we get too far into this vlog, gotta mention the sponsor of this vlog and once again, they're paying me zero money, zero dollars to say this and I'm talking about TPDcertified.com. TPD certified, experts in the field of TPD compliance, offering the most all-inclusive TPD service on the market today. Everything you need all in one place to give your brand access to one of the largest and most rapidly growing vaping markets on the freaking planet from the vapors for the vapors made to support the community and the industry worldwide head over to TPD certified and get in contact today seriously we're using them to go through the TPD process if you guys are friends with any liquid vendors manufacturers if you're a liquid vendor or manufacturer yourself watching this seriously hit them up tpdcertified.com the process is long and expensive but they've been making it not so want to like tear my hair out stressful. So real fast before we get into what I've been vaping, I'm going to play a video from one of my subscribers. I've been asking any of my subscribers, and this goes for anything, viewer mail, getting to know Grim Green, or the occasional shout out to just record a quick video on your phone and send it to me because I like featuring my subscribers in my videos. I, I love it. And last week I was having a, a really difficult week. I have a lot of, I, I've had some really shitty days recently. Just really shitty days. Not anything, you know, terribly bad. I'm not dead. I'm not sick. I'm still alive. I'm not injured. We're all fine and we're, we're living out our lives. But I've had some really stressful, really fucking shitty days and I've dealt with some really shitty fucking people over the last couple weeks and it's it's really been uh, I don't know weighing me down I've been feeling really crummy lately just really overall crummy just shitty day after shitty day and I've been in a pretty foul mood and uh, 
of course, there was an incident last week uh, on YouTube that is is not there anymore, and I won't be putting it up anywhere, and I really would rather just not talk about it if that's okay. But I was having a pretty shitty week, and I got an email from this guy, William, and he sent in a video for a shout-out, and I don't know what it was, but it watching William's video made all of my shitty days worth it. Um, he really tugged at my heartstrings, and so I'd like I'd like to hear from William right now. Hey, Grim Green, or Grim, Nick. Um, I just wanted to let you know, you know, I've been watching you for years, or at least two, four years now. I wanted to give a shout out to my mom and I. We've been vaping and smoke free for about, I don't know, I want to say about four or five years now. And I also wanted to give you a suggestion for the next big, the next beer. It's from uh, the Coronado Brewing Company. It's a uh, mer mermaid red or red, red, mermaid, mermaid. Red ale, so it's pretty good, and it's not too pricey, but you'll like it. No cork, so yeah, quick toot. So yeah, I uh, hope to hope I get make it into your next vlog or a vlog after the next, but uh, can't wait to see your next vlog. So bye. Yeah, absolutely, William. That was awesome. I'm telling you that literally, it really put a smile on my face. I watched that video uh, late at night. Um, sometimes late at night, uh, I, I end up answering a lot of emails. That's when I get the majority of my emails done. If you get an email from me, it was probably sent at like you know after 10 p.m. West Coast time. That's when I can kind of sit and do emails and just kind of catch up on a lot of stuff. And I had had a really bad day and I was in a really foul mood, man. And I was not excited about answering these emails. And I might, you know, I feel like I felt like I was being short with some people, you know, if someone emailed me and was like, hey, do you know where I can get, you know, replacement O-rings for this, that and the other? And I'm just like, no, nope, sorry, I don't, I can't help you. And, you know, I was, I was being a little bit short with people and I regret that. And I was just, it, I was having a rough day. I was having a rough week, man. And so I opened this email from William and watching that video literally made all my shitty days worth it. Um, William, absolutely, you get a shout out. Your girl, your wife, you didn't say her name, but you also get a shout out. And I will absolutely check out that beer. In fact, not next week, but the week after next. There's not going to be, oh, there might be a vlog next week. No, there's not going to be a vlog next week. There's going to be a bunch of ECC footage next week, but there's not going to be a full, full vlog next week. When we get back into the full, full vlog the week afterwards, I am absolutely going to check out that beer from Coronado Brewing Company, and we are going to do it as a beer tasting. Not today, but in the next vlog, so in two weeks. I know that's confusing, and it doesn't really matter. I'll remind you guys, but we are going to do that Coronado uh, Mermaid's Red uh, Ale that William suggested. But thank you, William, for sending that my way. Um, you may not realize it, but you had a big impact on my mood that day, and I, I very, very much appreciate it. If any of you, any of my subscribers, have any video shout-outs you'd like to send in, getting to know Grim Green questions, or even viewer mails, just shoot a quick video on your phone and send it over, nick at grimgreen.com. I would much rather watch a video and play it here on the vlog and answer it publicly than just text on a white screen, black text on a white screen, just no personalities, no faces, no nothing. It just seems really boring and sterile. And you know me, I'm all about that human connection. I like meeting people. I like talking to people. And so the videos, they really help. And uh, they're, they're fun. They're fun. And they're entertaining. Does everybody like seeing the videos? Does that, do, do, any, do you guys like seeing yourselves, uh, you know, other subscribers in the Grim Green channel? I think it's pretty cool. But anyway, thank you, William, for sending that in. Uh, really really had a big impact on me, more than more than you might know, bro. But right now, I want to get into what I have been vaping. Of course, first things first, uh, me one, <laughs> you know, it's whatever, no big surprises. Me one, 18 milligram Glacier Banana. This is just my mouth-to-lung daily banger. I have filled this up twice already today, twice already today. That's how much I've been using it. It's my Disneyland vape. In fact, after ECC, me and Coil Turd, yeah, we're going to Disneyland, and I'm going to film a bunch of it because we're going to have a great time. But yeah, me one, dude. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's so good. No matter how stressed out I get, if I sit and I take a couple toots on this me one, I, it really helps like 
center me, man. That's, that's a feeling that takes me back to like 2009, like when I first started getting into vaping and I was having a lot of fun and, and there was no work. There wasn't, it wasn't a job. I didn't worry about SEO numbers. I was talking to Ruby Roo about this and I'm sorry to go on a tangent right now, but I have a lot of things in my head. I was actually talking to Ruby Roo about this earlier and I was like, hey, remember when social media was fun? Remember when it was just fun and you could just kind of post whatever you wanted, like, hey, here's a cool mod, here's a cool setup, here's me, here's hanging out, here's doing all this stuff, like, before it was where you get worried about, like, SEO and, like, uh, reach and engagement and stuff like that. Vaping this Me One with 18 milligram Glacier Banana very much uh, gets me back to my roots. It puts me back in 2009, it puts me back in that fun mode, that fun mood, and that's a, a really motivating factor to remember why we all started doing this shit in the first place, you know? Anyway, sentimental about the Mi One, I just, I just like it a lot. Yeah, good, that's real good. Next thing I've been vaping the fuck out of is this Segeli Chaos mod, topped with that, with that UL Valerian sub-ohm tank. This sub-ohm tank is good, it is really good, it is a stellar, stellar sub ohm tank. Shortly after ECC, I'm gonna do a full review, <coughs> pardon me, for this uh, Valerian sub ohm tank. It's just been fantastic. It's filled with, uh, pardon me, now I'm all gassy. It's filled up with uh, chocolate mint, chocolate chip mint, something like that, vape city sauce. I'll throw links to everything I'm talking about down in the description, don't even worry about it, but dude, this is a rad vape. Very stellar vape. Um, this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to bring to ECC or not. I'm definitely going to bring this atomizer, but I don't know if I'm going to bring this mod. This is the uh, Lost Vape Therion Dual 18650 DNA75C, which now they have uh, eScribe for Mac. So I've been fiddling around with that. It's not as good as it was for Windows. I mean, maybe this is a new eScribe, but I really need to get used to it. Anyway, let's talk with Daniel DJ LSB Vapes Aura RDA. I've been seeing this RDA get a lot of hate across the internet. People are like, oh, it's just clamp style decks and ooh, it should have so much better flavor because it has the Kennedy style airflow. I don't know what the fuck you people are smoking because the Aura RDA has rad, rad flavor. I think it has good flavor. I think it has good, smooth airflow. I like the Kennedy airflow. I like the deck. I like the flavor that I get from this RDA. But you know what? It's whatever. It's every, everything is an opinion, right? All of this is just my opinion. No big deal. Fuck, that's a good vape. It's damn good. If I had a complaint about this, which I do, uh, it would be that the airflow isn't as smooth as I would want. It's a little bit rough. It's a little bit on the turbulent side, but it's no big deal. I got this loaded up with uh, Poet Amaretto Nightcap, and like I keep saying, I am going to bring this to ECC. I'm going to track down Daniel, and I'm going to shoot a review for this with Daniel right next to me. That's what I'm dying to do, and I'm going to make it happen. I mean, okay, don't get your hopes too up that that's going to happen. I'm going to try really very hard, the hardest I've ever tried to make that happen, okay? I'm also on that uh, Revenant that I got from Sweden. Now I can show it to you. It's topped with the Recoil Rebel RDA, DHD Macaron Drip Tip on top, which I need to, I need to re-up on some DHD stuff. I need some more Goon stuff, and I need some more Recoil stuff, and I need some more, I need the, uh, the Ginger Snap Caps fit inside that new rig mod tanker, which is empty right now. It's getting cleaned, which is why it's not in the what I've been vaping. But those tri those tips fit in the tanker, and that makes me excited as well. Got this loaded up with uh, Pink Paradise from Bonsai Vapors, just bleh, right through the middle. You're good to vape. This is a 0.29 at 80 watts. It's, ju it's just good. It's just good. Vaping doesn't get much better than that. Lastly, I've been using Minikin. Uh, this is the Minikin Reborn. Top of that, Inokin Thermo RDA. I've been vaping it a lot. So much. Like, too much. I've been neglecting other things because I've become so fascinated with this. Like, why did they do it the way they did it? Why did they put the airflow right there? Why do they have this big chamber with big airflows and the big, like, weather storm veins at the top? It's just... It's such a bizarre RDA that I can't I can't put it down. It's got a really unique draw. It's 
it's almost unbelievable. It's almost like, and this is gonna sound really dumb, but this is what I think about. If you took an RDA with a lot of airflow, like if you took the Goon, like the Goon 1.5 with that Cylon style slot, if you open that up all the way and then put like a filter or like a paper towel over it, it becomes like this, like this smooth, like you're trying to breathe through like a filter or trying to breathe through like a paper towel. It's just like very oddly smooth and even. I really wish the flavor was better on this because I like the vape I'm getting from it, but the flavor, the flavor is what suffers on the 27 millimeter version. This is loaded up with uh, something. Where the hell did my juice bottle go, Nick? Oh, I put it over here. Cardamator Crush from the Epiclabs line. Very delicious juice, strawberry pink champagne, and I'm just not getting that really good flavor from this Inokin Thermo, unfortunately, because it's a really satisfying vape otherwise. Oof. Yeah, wow, weird, so weird, just such a weird vape. Every time I vape it, I go, man, that's so weird. And then I go, I wanna vape it again. So I grab it again and I keep vaping it. And every time I set it down, I go, man, that's so weird. And then inevitably I'll pick it up and vape it again. I don't know. I don't get it. That Inokin Thermo is confusing and fascinating to me. So anyway, that's good. We got through some vape mail. We got through some announcements. We got through some stuff like that. I think it's time to head back over to the desk or over to the desk, let's say, for the first time. We got some news and stuff to talk about. All right. Yeah, cool. I got some uh, a few a couple items here that I wanted to talk about. The first thing is an article out of the UK that I saw um, that is a guide to vaping etiquette has been released including the top 10 places you should never vape. This is coming out of the UK where vaping, as far as I understand, I'm not in the UK, I'm not a resident of the UK, so maybe some UK vapors can chime in, but vaping is getting very, very accepted in the UK, so much so that this media outlet, like like LancasterMercury.co.uk, has released the guide to vaping etiquette, including the top 10 places you should never vape. And it's not a terribly interesting article, Article, I just thought it was, yeah, maybe slightly humorous. It says, blowing thick clouds of vapor out of a portable electronic device may have got you some funny looks a few years ago, but vaping has now fully entered the mainstream, with around 2.2 million UK adults using the devices. 2.2 million! That's crazy, and while it looks like electronic cigarettes are here to stay, many people are confused over the do's and don'ts of the habit. According to The Mirror, more than a third of vapors admitted that they don't really know where they can and can't vape. Okay, well that... Look, that's not that's not really true. Just don't vape where you can't smoke. That's a really easy, one simple, really easy rule to follow. And if you want to vape where you can't smoke, ask someone if you can vape or smoke there. <laughs> really, very, very simple. Eight of ten vapors, I don't, who are, the, who are the ten vapors that they polled here? Eight in ten vapors claim to be considerate of others, but a third of non-vapors say that there is a lack of vaping decency. Okay, obviously, these numbers have no frame of reference. That, that means nothing to me. Eight in ten vapors? How many vapors did you pull? And how many non-vapors did you pull? A third of non-vapors? If it was three people, then, I mean, I don't know, statistics are weird. But it does say a third of non-vapers say there is still a lack of vaping decency. Uh, as a result, e-cig brand Vipe, V-Y-P-E, has partnered with etiquette experts uh, to help ease the confusion and add a little decorum to vaping. In a restaurant, a queue, in bed, are among others of the no-go areas for vaping. Really? In a bed? You know how much I fucking vape in bed? It's unreal. Blowing vapor in someone's face is also a no-go, along with during a job interview and in a confined space such as a lift. Yeah, of course. This is all... <laughs> I know this isn't meant to be a rage article, but this is all just, sure, blowing vapor in someone's face is a no-no. We need to be told that blowing a cloud of vapor in a stranger's face is a no-no. They think that we need to know that. During a job interview in a confined space such as a lift? <laughs> and the guide to vaping etiquette advises that a main rule of thumb is not to assume it's accessible and all ex acceptable and always check first. Yeah, 
always check first. When vaping at work, exercise moderation. You wouldn't want to boss. You wouldn't want your boss to think you're more interested in your e-cigarette than your email. Okay, I really regret reading this article because it's really, really fucking stupid. Uh, stealth vaping. They also use caution. Uh, of course, it's possible to vape discreetly with minimal exhalation of vapor, but nobody wants to be outed in a non-vaping zone. Zone and stealth vaping was considered to be a faux pas by our survey respondents. So there you go. Bible truth right there. Stealth vaping is definitely a faux pas. This is the dumbest fucking article I've ever read. I can't believe I'm wasting vlog time on it. At least we can make fun of it together, right? The guide also offers advice to non-vapers who might feel moved to confront a vapor about his or her habit. Decisions about where or where not to vape and where to allow vaping are largely discretionary and civilized vaping is dependent on good manners from vapors and non-vapors alike. I feel like you could replace vapors and vaping in this article with like almost everything else. Decisions about where to masturbate or not to masturbate are largely discretionary and civilized masturbating is dependent on good manners from both masturbators and non-masturbators alike. Yeah, uh, that definitely still works. It's not difficult to be a respectful vapor, though. You just need to be courteous and ask permission before engaging in behavior that it may affect others. The whole article could have been that sentence. It's not difficult to be a respectful vapor, though. You just need to be courteous and ask permission before engaging in behavior that may affect others. Let me reread that and leave vapor out. Uh, it's not difficult to be a respectful person, though. You just need to be courteous and ask permission before engaging in any behavior that may affect others. Others. There you go. <laughs> what a bunch of horse shit. This is so fucking stupid. Okay, let's wrap this st stupid, stupid article up. The top 10 places that you should never vape, according to this really bad article. In a confined space. Now, is this in a confined space by yourself? Like, could I go in my closet and vape? Or is that a no-no? In a restaurant. Uh, in, I mean, unless the restaurant allows you to vape. We went to... Uh, a restaurant in, where was that? Florida? Ohio? I think it was Ohio called Vortex and they allowed us to vape wherever we wanted. During a job interview. Yeah. I mean, they might as well just put ooh, hang gliding, riding a roller coaster. Don't, don't do it. Don't in a helicopter. Skydiving. Don't do it skydiving. Uh, don't vape in someone's face. Don't vape in a car without permission. In a queue, which that's British for, you know, a line. Like if you're waiting in line, don't do that. In your own home without permission. Pickle, can I vape? Yeah, don't worry, it's cool. She said I could vape. All right, I did it in my home with permission. On a public transport, sure. When someone is cooking, does that mean if you're in the same room as someone that's cooking? Or is that just when someone's cooking in general? Because I'm pretty sure right now in this apartment complex, there's probably 20 or 30 people cooking. I should, I'm gonna, I should go ask him if I can vape. In bed. Yeah, fuck the police. Right, Nico? Vaping in bed. Oh, well, yeehaw. I'm so glad I wasted so much time in the vlog on this article. Well, if you want to follow the link in the description and read a pointless article with arbitrary rules and lists that make no sense and they're just trying to be funny and cute and poke fun at vaping, then feel free. Click the link in the description and you can read this travesty for yourself, this monstrosity for yourself. Anyway, I had something else I wanted to talk about too. And uh, over on Reddit, so uh, I go to Reddit uh, constantly. Every day, I like Reddit, I like reading the news, I like reading a bunch of stuff on Reddit. I subscribe to the ECR subreddit, but I don't know, that, that subreddit's gotten a little bit weird over the last couple years. I've been a I've been a member of that subreddit for since 2014, basically. I think that's when I started on Reddit, it was 2014. 13 or 2014. I don't remember. Anyway, they, they, it's just a little bit weird over there. Anyway, I mean, still good people. I like, uh, I like reading some of the things that they post and interacting with some of the things that get posted over there, but I usually stick to like uh, bigger subreddits and there was a subreddit. Uh, there was, this was posted on the GIFs subreddit or GIFs. If you're a crazy person, GIFs subreddit, and it's a guy vaping by the freeway and a truck comes by and it just looks really cool. 
like, come on, that looks really super fucking cool. And I was like, oh, well, look at that. A vaping post made it to the front page of Reddit. Should I even bother to look and see what the comments are? And of course, the first comment with 7,000 upvotes is, wait, I'm upvoting a vaping GIF? And people, you know, they, people just keep going on and on and on and on. We get it. You upvote. We get it. You get it. Trump is cool. Vapes are cool. It all makes perfect sense. Up vape. Uh, I didn't want to, but I upvoted it anyways. Vape Nation, go green, Vape Nation, represent Vape Nation. And this one guy says, I said, huh, that's cool, before I even realized I was being entertained by a vapor. I guess there does have to be at least one exception to everything. And then he edited his comment and said, I've decided to take solace in the fact that I am upvoting physics and not upvoting a douche cloud. And so people on Reddit and people on the internet are just ruthless. They are just ruthless and they hate vaping. And then the next guy chimes in and he says, I forget, why don't we like people who vape? And this guy says, well, there's basically two reasons. We hate all new trends and H3H3 made a video about it. And then some people actually came in to defend vaping. This is kind of towards the top of the page and you can read all this. He says, it's a shame because smokers use it to quit and it has a really high efficacy in helping people quit cigarettes. Not that there aren't plenty of douches who've ruined the image of it. Do you mean to tell me that vaping is the only thing that douchebags have ruined the image of? Are you, are you kidding me right now? This other guy says, it's helped me cut down on cigarettes for the past four years that I've been smoke free for one to two years now at this point. I've used the same menthol flavor the whole time. I've never mo modded my kit to make obnoxious clouds. I'm discreet at work to the point my manager didn't notice I vape for three months and my boss said to ignore it. And Vape nace, y'all, but never mind. People rolling down their windows to taunt me at red lights with big clouds or red lights at the highway shouting, Vape nace, y'all. I'm the obnoxious asshole. Got it. Another guy said, personally, I think it's awesome if it helps you quit. To me, it's not obnoxious or assholish at all. It's the obnoxious assholes that take impossible large drags in a confined space, then blow it all over the place. Then, when asked politely not to do that, take some sort of civil rights platform and act like they're being infringed upon, always exclaiming, it's only water vapor. To recap, vaping is cool if you use it to quit. Vaping is stupid to use it to stimulate ripping bong hits in public areas. So I'm getting the vibe that uh, vaping's public image is not super great. I'm also realizing that there's a lot of fucking cock monkeys on Reddit, man. <laughs> so many cock monkeys. Yeah, Jaster M, I'm calling you a cock monkey. Just let people enjoy things. You know, like, uh, selfie sticks and fidget spinners and, and all these like annoying trends that people seem to hate on, none of that actually bothers me because I don't care if someone enjoys something that's silly. Just let people enjoy things. And yeah, you know what? There are douches. There are douchebags everywhere. But I guarantee you 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt that the douchebag who blows a huge cloud in your face in an elevator isn't just a douchebag vapor. That guy is a douchebag 100% of his life. I think people need to realize that yeah, there's just, it's not, it's not people versus the vapors. It's not people versus who, who like fidget spinners. It's not people versus anybody else. It's not like a normal group of people versus all these like fringe people. It's like people versus douchebags. And those douchebags do a lot of things. Some of them vape. Some of them trick out their car with big, ugly fucking douchebag spoilers. Some of them just get fucking hammered at a kegger and try to do a backflip off of a balcony and pull pranks and be like, it's a prank, bro. Look, there's douchebags everywhere. This isn't confined to vaping. What you're arguing about is douchebags. And I know I'm trying to make sense out of a Reddit thread. I just thought it was really interesting because every vape post on Reddit that gets to the front page of Reddit, which is like where everybody will see it, it always goes the same way. The first bunch of comments are all anti-vaping. Like, ah, what a douche flute. What an asshole. I can't believe I upvoted this. Vape nation, y'all. Vaping and all this stuff and all this shit. And then inevitably, someone chimes in on like the 10th or 11th comment and they're like, actually, vaping really helped me cut down on cigarettes a lot. But I don't, you know, I don't blow up in clouds. I just use it to quit smoking, you know. And people are like, oh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. As long as you're not one of those guys, then yeah, that's totally cool. Yeah, definitely. I get it. So there's a lot of people on here literally saying that if 
you vape to quit smoking, then it's cool. But if you vape to quit smoking and you blow a big ass cloud, then somehow you're like a fucking scum of the earth asshole douchebag. Okay, cool. Just want to just want to make sure that that's where everybody on Reddit's coming from. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good Reddit. Good. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be so ragey. I realize this is just people, whatever, having a conversation. But I feel like the comment section on Reddit, all all over Reddit, all, all the subreddits, all the subreddits is uh, kind of a lot of horrible people. Um, a lot of really un under non understanding people. Uh, it's whatever. It's 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 the internet. This is something that you know we have to get used to. It's just people being dicks. Sorry, sorry. I'm not trying to rag on Reddit. I go to Reddit all the time and I comment on some stuff sometimes. You know what I mean? But really, it's not. I like I said, the douchebag that's blowing a big cloud in the middle of Walmart isn't just a douchebag vapor. That person is a douchebag just like completely i guarantee you they're a douchebag in the rest of their lives too they probably change lanes without their turn signals you know a douchebag is a douchebag it doesn't matter if you're a vapor or a smoker or uh, in a band or a race car driver i don't know why did i go to those professions <laughs> anyway it's weird i don't know i had to let off some steam there about reddit um anyway let's uh let's finish up that let's finish up this news and advocacy section uh I didn't really have any advocacy. There's not a whole hell of a lot going on right now, but that doesn't mean that there's any reason to like, huh, and pause and do something. It's always, always going forward. There's plenty of advocacy organizations. There's CASA, there's Safada, there's Not Blowing Smoke, there's the VTA, there's the, what's, what's the other one? What's the, what's the other one? Did I say VTA? Yeah, the VTA, the AVA, there's a lot of great advocacy organizations out there. Go follow them, follow them on social media, join their websites, get involved, do everything you can. Just because there's no like legislation right now that's happening right at this moment doesn't mean that advocacy doesn't need to be at the forefront of everything that we're doing. And I, I definitely agree with that. And I get off track sometimes, but we need to just not, we need to try to not get off track in the future. Anyway, let's jump over to, uh, let's, let's actually go upstairs. Let's go back in time and go upstairs and have some beers. All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to the patio. Gonna start this vlog off, or well, the filming process of it, at least. I know this is in the middle of the vlog, but like I said, this is the first thing that I shoot. So to me, the beer starts off the vlog. Anyway, yeah, we went with Corona. We went Corona. There was a lot of back and forth, a lot of like, oh, I don't know, Corona, the, oh my cups up here. People were like, Corona, Heineken, Corona, Heineken. And then a lot of people were like, Sam Adams. People were like, uh, Dos Equis. And I was like, okay, well, we'll just do one at a time. I think Corona might actually wrap up the like regular beer type of, you know, videos that we've been doing regular beers here in the vlog. I think we're going to go back to like maybe some fancier beers. I really want to try that Coronado uh, Red Mermaid's Ale. But right now, look at this. This is a huge Corona. This is all they have. <laughs> I'm not like going, I didn't buy, pick out the biggest one on purpose. This is just literally all they had. Yeah, look at that Corona. And I know people are going to be pissed off at me. I don't have any limes, man. I'm not going to be sick saved by the buoyancy of citrus. <laughs> yeah, I got no limes, I got no nothing. I don't even have a phone or an iPad to look at this on Beer Advocate. Wow, really, really good preparation this week, Nick. Your microphone's fucking up all over the place. You drop your camera and you break it, and now you don't even have anything to look up Corona. It's whatever. I guess I need this Corona more than I think, or more than I realize. Anyway, here we go. Bottoms up. Cheers to you guys. Here's Corona. Yeah, you know, it is whatever. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Corona. I'm not a huge fan of Mexican beers. I like Tecate, all right, but I'm not a huge fan of Mexican beers. There's something a little bit sour, and not like in a sour, like a positive sour, like you would find in a sour beer. Like, it's like a negative sour attribute. Back in the day, um, I spent years doing coffee tasting for Starbucks. I was a coffee taster, me and my boss, Doug. We were the two coffee tasters for 
our entire roasting plant and we would taste hundreds and hundreds of cups of coffee every single day and you get to pick out these little like flavor <coughs> pardon me like these little flavor defects that happen and sometimes it's sour sometimes it's musty sometimes it's phenol sometimes it's all these other things sour is what i taste in this as like a negative attribute in this beer <coughs> sour mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fine. It's not... I actually like Budweiser more than this. Um, I think this is my least favorite of the regular beers I have had. I'd rather have PBR than this. I'd rather have Budweiser than this. What was the other one we did? There was another one in there. Has it been that long that I really don't remember? Good God, I have a bad memory. Anyway, this is probably, like I said, my least favorite of the regular beers, hence why I'm not just like chugging it down. Like last week, that Budweiser was so easy to drink. I'm just, oh, okay, here's Budweiser. Got, 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 got. This Corona mm, hits me the wrong way. Hits me in a funny, sour place that I'm not super excited about. Okay, well, there you go. And so, uh, same pairing as last week because it's a very, I don't know, similar-ish beer. This is that USV, you know, Grim Green record player, dual 8 or single 18650 uh, 80-watt regulated guy topped with the Synthetic Cloud Flux Tank, which I have been using like crazy. There's going to be a review for this uh, right when I get back from ECC. Filled up with uh, Skull and Crossbones from Vigil Ante. And like I always say, don't worry, I'll post links to everything I talk about down in the description. So if you're curious about the Flux Tank, I'll have a link for it. If you're curious about the juice, I'll have a link for it. If you're curious about literally anything, I'll have a link for it down below. Let's see if my batteries are charged. Yeah, batteries are charged. This is set to 50 watts. I kinda, I'm really kind of enjoying this mod, like a, a lot. <laughs> I'm kind of really enjoying it a lot. It's very cool. Anyway, let's try it. Let's pair this. Eh, nothing. It's dumb. It's fine. I mean, it tastes, I get Vigilante Skull and Crossbones, which is delicious. And then I get Corona, which is kind of less than delicious to me. I'm sorry. I'm just not a big fan of this beer. I don't want to upset any like Corona fan 99 at hotmail.com. Like if any of you are huge Corona fans, then go bananas. More for you. You don't have to worry about me buying any of your supply. I'm really just not a huge fan of it. And it's not because it's like a simple beer. It's just because I don't really like this beer. I actually really like Budweiser. Budweiser is a beer that I would buy again and drink. PBR is a beer that I would buy again and drink. Corona, eh. Like if that's all they had somewhere, like if you go to your friend's house and they have a cooler full of beer and it's like, oh, all that's left is Corona. I'd be like, I'm all set. I don't, <laughs> I don't, need, I don't need Corona. I'm all set. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not very good. It hits me weird. It hits me in a weird sour place. Like on the back of my tongue, I have this weird sour sensation. I don't know why I keep drinking it. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That's the beer segment. I always love some beer recommendations. If you have any, just leave them down in the comments below. But I think next week we're going to do the Coronado Brewing uh, Mermaid's Red Ale. So if anybody wants to go grab a bottle, if you can grab a bottle. I know Coronado Brewing Company is based out of California, out of Southern Cal San Diego, California. So I'm not sure how widespread it is, if anybody can get it. But if anybody wants to get it and drink beer with me, it's not going to be next week. I'm going to repeat this a couple times throughout the vlog. There will be no vlog, this vlog, next week. Next week is going to be all chock full of ECC footage. I'm going to do uh, a slight travel vlog. I'm going to do some reviews. I'm going to do some other fun shenanigans and stuff. And uh, yeah, so in the next real vlog, we're going to taste that Coronado uh, beer. Anyway, that's what I got. That's all I got for beer segment. So yeah, let's get back to it. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the post vlog Easter egg. Um, last week when I was up on this patio shooting my beer segment, I was shooting a bunch of test footage and there was one shot, there was one clip that was like really super out of focus and I feel like I did a pretty good Rick impression during that time, so th that's what you get to watch now. You earned it. Oh. 
All right, cool. It's time to do some vape mail. I got my uh, vanilla scented garbage bag from Target. It smells like vanilla. Do you guys buy these? Of course I want my trash to smell like vanilla. That's amazing. Anyway, got some stuff from DHL here. Got some stuff from UPS here. Not sure, again, where any of this come from, where any of this comes from, but hell, we're going to open it and see what's inside. I'm hoping there's something in here that I really want to set up because if I can't find something in here that I want to set up, I really want to set up that Watofo Flow Tank. Oh, oh, I've been hearing a lot of really good things about that, and I've had it set to the side for a while now. I think it might be time to uh, might be time to get that going. But first, obviously, we need to see what's in the vape mail land. Ah, it's a football. Oh, just be thankful that none of your vape mail arrives this way. Okay, I got it. First, there's a note. Okay, this is the Com Comgi Keel Mod. The Comgi Keel Mod. I don't recognize this at all, and it does not sound familiar to me. So, oh, okay, okay, cool. I know what this is. I know exactly what this is, and we are definitely going to open one of these right now. They sent me two, which means I get to do one for the $2 sale. I explained how the $2 sales work in the last vlog, because um, I know a lot of people had questions about that. Um, but we had a $2 sale last week, and I've already I picked out a winner. We'll announce the winner, I don't know, later, just a little bit towards the end of the video, you know? This is a Stabwood Squonker. It's a Stabwood Single 18650 Squonker. It's a very dark colored wood. It's really tiny. It's fully mechanical and it's fully magnetic, meaning that the door is magnetic to the battery. The door doesn't stay on here if, if there's not a battery in here. Here's your squonk. Here's your switch. That's very interesting. I don't know. Might be time to tr give this a try maybe. I do have a goon that is all set up and ready to be squonked. So I don't know. Let's put this, let's put this in the maybe. Let's put this in the, I might use this tonight in this vlog thing segment. It says beautiful stab wood material, pure handcrafted, 24 karat goro, 24 karat real gold plated connectors the lowest resistance and best conductivity special activation material connector not easy to be burned black and be oxidized safe fire button with spring and insulation e-liquid bottle is good seal leak proof i believe this came from china i believe this is a chinese produced stabilized wood squonker that right there imo that's huge that's, I think that, I feel like that's going to be a game changer, man. I really feel like that's going to be a game changer. China is going to start cranking out stab wood stuff and all the modders are going to be like, wow, okay, they can do it too. Healthy competition, a lot of healthy competition in this industry. Let me make sure this package is for me. Oh, I got some more Joy Tech. This is definitely Joy Tech stuff. I can tell, because Joy Tech does that, uh, here are your new samples for testing thing. Alright, what do we got in here? They're in upside down, I can't tell. This is the Kubox AIO, 2 mil leak proof tank all-in-one system. It looks to be kind of like a taller Mi1 all-in-one style system. I really like how it kind of looks like there's a little Derringer RDA on top. That kind of makes me stoked to try this out. I don't know, let's just open it. My vape mail segments always go a little bit longer than other people vape mail segments because I actually I try to open some stuff because I get too excited. Oh look at you little guy. You're just a little guy. Look at that little guy. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. What's in here? Is that a coil head in there? What is that? What are you? That's weird. Where's the tank? Oh I have a lot to figure out about this. That's the tank? That's the little two mil tank right there? Really? Is that how you fill it up? And you have to put a coil head in there too? Oh that's not... that seems like a, a little bit of a waste of space. Okay. You can do clouds or clouds. You can do long hits. Really, I want this for mouth to lung. That's what I'm after. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Kubox AIO, you're going to go away for now until I can figure you out later. Let's open some more mail, shall we? I actually don't know if this is vape mail or not. I don't recognize the name on this. It just looks like a, a person's name. So there's a good chance that this is not any sort of vape mail. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, I forgot about this. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Shout out to CJ in uh, Virginia for the tumbler. Look at that. It says Grim Green and it has the recoil on it. <laughs> I love this. I love this so hard. What do you have to say, CJ? 
Sorry this took so long to get out to you. Never apologize for that. You sent me something super dope for zero money. Sorry this took so long to get out to you. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for all you do. Keep up the good fight. Thanks, CJ. Well, I'm keeping this note forever, and this tumbler is amazing. How cool is that? God, I'm so stoked on this. All right, cool. I, I don't care. I'm gonna start using this. I'm gonna start using this for everything. For water, for beer. You wanna drink beer out of this? You wanna drink Heineken out of this? Yeah, we might make that a thing. Anyway, thank you, CJ. That was nice. That was awesome. That was a nice change of pace from just DHL package after DHL package. Don't know what's in here. Uh, ready box. Coilmaster Genesis RDTA. The Coilmaster made hardware? They made, they did a Genesis RDTA? What the what? And they have a little, uh, you know, travel size, uh, you know, coil building kit. The Genesis RDTA. I know literally nothing about this. I've never heard of this. So of course we have to look at it. I've never been a huge fan of RDTAs. There's a few that I really like, but for the most part, I'd rather just drip or use a use a traditional RTA. Okay, wow, that's a monster looking thing. That is a mon- Ah! Huh, look at that. First drop test and the glass didn't break. Well, there you go. Good job, Coil Master. Yeah, good O-rings. Filling it on the side. Velocity style deck. Adjustable airflow there. Big, a lot of airflow. Big adjustable airflow. Let's try it full open. Okay. Ah, that's a that's a thing. That's a definite reality right there. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna try to let's close off some of these airflow holes. Well, it still happens. That's weird. Okay, well, there you go. All right, Coilmaster, getting in the hardware game. Is, it's feel like this is the first thing, uh, non-build kit that Coilmaster has released. I don't. I've never seen them do hardware and stuff like that. Anyway, right on. Coilmaster, we're going to be trying that out later as well. I've got one last package here. It's no big deal. It's whatever. This one is light. I feel like there's zero in here. It's Christmas. Oh! 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 This might be something that we have to set up today. This might be what we're going to be setting up today. This is the Vandy Vape Pyro. Is this, the, is this the mouth to lung tank? If this is the Vandy Vape mouth to lung tank, which I know they're releasing, this might be something that we have to try today. Oh no, it's an RDTA. Okay, well, there you go. I thought it would be their mouth to lung vape. They're, they're making, Vandy Vape is making a mouth to lung tank that I am uh, obsessed with. I'm fascinated by it. It's still going, still rolling. Hit the wall. Okay, I'll be right back. Well, there's certainly a lot of Ultim showing on here, and the deck is a postless deck. It kind of looks very, very much like the, uh, you know, what was the one? What was the, what was the deck that, uh, Tony, Vapor Trail, Pulse Atomizer. It looks very much like the Pulse Atomizer. So that's the positive. Okay, well, that's weird. I'll have to figure this thing out. Uh, here. <laughs> this might be really very difficult to explain without actually looking at it. Yeah, so... It's a postless deck, and then there's these two big troughs, and I'm assuming you build your coils going this way so that they can, the trough can drop off. It seems like a weird design. I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have had your coils, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll get there when we get there. Anyway, it's a new Vandy Vape RDTA, and uh, I'm going to have to spend some time with this before it gets on to uh, on the video, but I'm really excited about the Vandy Vape mouth to lung tank. Anyway, what do you think? Should I set up the squonker? Should I set up the flow tank? Uh, okay, let's do the squonker. Why not? Let's just do it. I got a goon with a squonk pin all filled with juice ready to go. I can transfer the juice easily, and uh, we can use that little squonker guy. Cool? Cool. So, Let's get back over to the desk and I'll set up the squonker and we'll try it out. Okay, so we got this set up. We got this box set up. What'd I do with the box? Where'd the box go? Where's the box and why do I keep saying box? Yes, the Keel Mod. This is that stabilized wood guy. This is really, really dark stabilized wood. It's a very, very dark pattern. And I have a very non-matchy-matchy blue Goon 1.5 on there with the original Goon cap on there. And here's the thing. I'm not really a huge fan of squonking. If I'm being honest, I I don't get it. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I just I just don't get it. I hate squeezing the bottle. In order to get enough juice into this atomizer for me to feel comfortable vaping it, I crank this bottle like all the way against the other edge. Like just press it and hold it and then let go. And I'm waiting for the 
bottle to like reinflate and suck up all that juice and then I can vape it. This build isn't exactly meant for a single 18650 mechanical style mod, so it's very, very long ramp up time, very, very cool vapor, but I have Lowrider in here on the Goon 1.5. The weird thing about this mod is it's 2017, and this has a raised 22 millimeter deck on it, or deck, like 510. It's got a raised 22 millimeter 510. So when I put this 24 millimeter goon on it, yeah, it looks like it's just up on a pedestal and then there's just huge gaps all over the place. Squonking isn't for me. Squonking is not meant for me. That's the conclusion that I'm coming to. I like dripping. I like I like big coils and hot builds and high wattage and squonking seems like something that's for more for like like smaller clouds maybe or like you know mouth to lung stuff like if someone would create like a dope ass single coil mouth to lung RDA and I already have the Narda and I already have something else and that's not quite what I'm talking about. I mean like a true mouth to lung atomizer where you could just, there's a little coil in there and a little bit of wick and you can just go boop and squonk it and get it all wet and then vape it. With this, I have so much wick in here and I have so much wire in here. I mean these are, you know, these are tri-core aliens in here. It's gonna take a lot of juice to like saturate all of those and my juice bottle is already dwindling. It's already halfway done. This is a, like I said, single 18650. The door on this, uh, it kind of sucks um, a lot. I mean, really badly. There's two magnets on the door that hold on to your battery only. So yeah, they both just fell out. It takes literally zero effort to just shake this and have a yard sale with your battery and your door. This just, this this doesn't hold on very well. The battery's not in there very secure. Okay, well maybe it's in there a little bit secure, but it's not really in there secure. It wobbles around a lot. I feel like this Chinese company didn't really think this through. I feel like they just looked at a bunch of like American made squonkers and went, oh, we can do that without like, looking into what makes a good squonker a good squonker, or really even what makes a mod a good mod. You need to have, your battery needs to be secure in there. You need to have like magnets that hold your door on, or even like this could have been like a slider guy with magnets on the bottom and it would have held on so much better than just these two little magnets on the door. Anyway, I don't know. I'm gonna spend some more time with this. The button is also a little crunchy, but I will say I really have enjoyed this this size, this form factor is very nice. I actually really like this big protruding button too. It's just really easy to hit and press. It's like I said, it's a little bit crunchy, but I don't know, it vapes fine. So yeah, I'm gonna spend a lot more time with this before it, uh, you know, gets a full review or anything like that. But Keel Mod, K-E-E-L Mod from Comgi. Don't worry. I'll definitely have a link in the description. I was able to find their website and find these mods. So I will put a link down in the description and yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a janky little Chinese squonker guy. All right, cool, back here to the very beautiful, wonderful lighting that I have in this corner, but we're gonna be doing some retro vaping. Does anybody remember, it was probably like two years ago, the Achilles RDA. It was that huge, like 30 millimeter RDA. It was just gigantic. It had a huge velocity style deck in it. All I did was I used a, a coil master tool and I used some coil turd sticks and I built you know, some coils in here. These are big four millimeter coils. I used uh, that Kendo uh, cotton, loaded this up with rainbow sherbet in the dark. It's just a delicious flavor. And I'm really excited to try this atomizer again because I remember really enjoying this atomizer. I thought it was huge. I thought it was big. And in retrospect, it's not even 30 millimeters. I don't think it's 30 millimeters. I think the Twisted Mess is 30 is bigger than this. I think this was only a 27 millimeter RDA, but two years ago, I thought it was a giant. I thought it was a Goliath, just a behemoth RDA. All the walls on it are insanely thick. 
big drip tip, big airflow, thick, thick walls, big, thick posts, dual O-rings on the bottom, and it had these little tabs on the bottom that would grab your deck so that you could twist it off like this and you didn't have to worry about like your cap spinning on your O-rings. I was a really big fan of this and I liked that when you purged it went down and I just thought that was really super cool. So anyway, this is a .17. I've got it turned up to 120 watts because on big coils, on huge diameter coils, you have to crank up the wattage because there's so much ramp up time. You know what I mean? You've got, they're still the same aliens. You know, it's like the triple core 26 gauge uh, nichrome aliens that coil turd makes. So it's the same sticks, but I'm wrapping them on a four millimeter and it's just a lot more space. It's a lot more surface area. It's a lot more resistance. If I had wrapped these on like a two millimeter, these would be into like the danger build area. This would be like a 0.09 or a 0.08, but because I wrapped them on such a big post on a four millimeter post, it basically doubled that. So I've, I've got a 0.17 right now at 120 watts. I couldn't find a cool mod to put this on because it's such a big atomizer. I didn't have anything it would fit on, so I grabbed out this Leaning Tree Wood Mods because it's, you know, it's big and wide and it also looks really cool. It's a DNA 250. Anyway, 0.17 at 120 watts. Look at this ramp up time. Ready, ready? Ramp up time, go. Oh, did you see that ramp up time happening? That was a slow, long ramp up time. So you gotta turn that wattage up. Maybe we'll go up to 130 watts. Who cares? Call the cops, I don't care. Let's try it at 130 watts. Yeah, wow, so much ramp up time, dude. So much ramp up time. Now that's only really from like a completely cool like room temperature coil. Once you've been vaping it a little bit and you know that second toot or your third toot, it's gonna ramp up a lot faster because your coils are already warm. Oof, pardon me. So the airflow on this actually feels a lot like that Inokin Thermo RDA. And maybe that's the connection I'm making in my head. It's a really unique feeling airflow. It's not something I've felt a lot in the vape world as far as like RDAs and tanks go, but it's that very much like breathing through a filter, like an, an aquarium filter or like a couple layers of paper towel. It's like, it's like this weird, I can't, I can't explain it. And now I just sound like an idiot. Yeah, it's like breathing through paper towels. But it really is, it feels like there's something, it feels like there's a fine filter covering this airflow. It just makes it very, very even. That's what I get from it. I guess if I had to describe it, it would be even. Very even feeling airflow. I don't know, man, I'm enjoying this. The juice, this is a juice that I have vaped so much of. I mean, gallons and gallons of this juice, of this rainbow sherbet in the dark. So I'm very familiar with the flavor profile of it. It tastes like that juice in here. It's just not strong. It's just not very intense. Tense. I tried to take up as much of that, you know, inner chamber as I could with like coils and cotton and that's going to help out the flavor a lot. But because the chamber is so big in there, it kind of takes your, your flavor and goes with it. Like here's where you're used to and here's where it's going to taste right now on this Achilles. Dude, so good. This is a good vape. I'm going to use, I'm going to vape this. I'm going to use this vape. It's good. Good, that's good. Cool, well there you go, Achilles. I'm gonna try to track down a link. I think this was sold on eBay and it might still be there. I'm gonna search for it, but I'll definitely put a link in the description to my original Achilles review. I believe it was 2016, maybe it was only a year ago. Was it 2016 or 2015? I think it actually might have been 2015. We'll find out when I find the actual video, but I'll put a link down in the description to this original review. Anyway, we're done with retro vaping, so uh, as always, I'm not exactly sure what's next. Next, so fuck, let's go back to the vlog. All right, well, we got a video getting to know Grim Green question. Uh, Kenny sent us a video, so sure, let's see what Kenny has to say. 
What's going on, Grim? It's Kenny out here with Empire Vaping Co. Uh, basically, I just wanted to ask you one of your questions for getting to know Grim Green. Um, I asked a question about four or five vlogs ago, somewhere around that. And um, basically, watching your uh, 727.17 vlog, the Jewel Drama Dead Rabbit RDA review, I noticed you were talking about the PAX 3. Uh, PAX 3 more or less being well known for dry herb vaping, uh, or using cannabis and um i understand you know everybody has their own right to keep certain things private and personal to them but i was just curious if you do use cannabis for medical reasons or anxiety reasons even cbd which is the non-psychoactive proponent from cannabis um just kind of curious again huge fan of yours you're basically the only reviewer to this day that i still watch and um, yeah, I figured it'd be an interesting question to ask. I saw quite a few comments on that video about people curious as to whether you use cannabis or not. Regardless, man, it doesn't matter. You're from California. I'm sure you're used to seeing it and smelling it everywhere. But just figured I'd ask the quick question. And uh, yeah, man, let's keep on vaping. <laughs> yeah, so Kenny, thank you for sending that in. If anybody else has any getting to know Grim Green questions, just send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. And if you want to shoot a video, shoot a video too. I actually like those a lot better than just reading black text on a white screen. But anyway, Kenny, um, yeah, I, of course I do. I mean, I'm, I'm a free American living in a recreational legal state. I'm, of course I'm going to partake. I don't use it for... Uh, really anything uh, medical. I don't have any uh, pain or discomfort or diseases or anything that I would need to be using uh, cannabis or CBD for. Um, Casey was in a car accident a few years ago and she has really severe reoccurring uh, pain in her back and pain in her shoulder. So her doctor gave her uh, a card and she was getting it, you know, uh, for medical reasons to help with her pain. And I was getting it because being stoned is awesome. I feel like I may have talked about this before, but really the only reason I like it is because I, I treat uh, I treat cannabis like I would um, alcohol or something like that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to wake up first thing in the morning and just get hammered drunk. And I'm not going to, at lunchtime, have 16 beers and just get hammered drunk. And I'm not going to get hammered drunk every single night. But sometimes in the evenings when I feel like I've earned it, I will definitely partake. What I really enjoy about it is how it affects the way that I think. And I'm, I'm new to this. I'm, I'm new to this whole culture. I've only, I've only been partaking since maybe shit January I guess there was a couple times like last year in December and in the UK when I did it and I had a really great time but like as a normal thing like in the house and having accessories and and pipes and cones and and a grinder and stuff like this it's only been since about January and so I'm just kind of getting to know it I like getting to know the different strains and seeing the effects that they have I know my limits now when I'm like when I get too stoned and when I get really good and like the hunger that happens like this is all this is all very new to me as a 40 year old this is all very mostly brand new to me of course you know in high school I smoked a fuck ton of weed but in high school you smoke you smoke terrible shit you just smoke whatever's available like whatever my buddy dan had yep that's what we were smoking didn't know what it was didn't care what it was N strains what what's that indica what's that my tolerance is still very 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 low i don't uh I, like i said i treat it like alcohol at the end of the night if i feel like i've earned it i'll definitely partake and honestly i've had a lot of great ideas for grim green and for marketing and for the recoil and for juice and for things like that when I'm stoned. That's when my brain really starts getting creative. I've been drawing a lot when I'm stoned and I've been, you know, thinking a lot and writing a lot and I just feel like it's uh, it's been very helpful in kind of getting my thoughts out and making me more of a creative person, I guess. Obviously, I've never ever shot a video even a slightly on any THC whatsoever. If that's something you guys want to see, then just let me know. We could probably arrange that, but as it stands, it's not ever going to be in my videos. There's never going to be like a grim, dank, green THC YouTube channel. I'm never going to review uh, cannabis products. I did buy a PAX 3 and I don't like it very much at, at all. I'm probably going to sell it if anybody wants to buy it. But yeah, it's something that's, uh, that's 
fun and legal and I, I like it and I use it responsibly and I, I don't, I, you know, honestly, I, I never really saw anything wrong with it ever to begin with ever. You know, I'm a freedom guy. And so I think that if you are a free adult American, you should be allowed to put in your body whatever you want to, as long as it doesn't affect other people. And, you know, I, I very much know my limits. There's certain things like I won't walk to the mini mart down the block if I'm too stoned. I just won't do it. I just won't leave the house. Here's what I've discovered so far. I'm very aware of like my tolerances, how much I can consume before I might start feeling uncomfortable where I like to get and how long that'll take me to kind of come back down. I've there's certain strains that I really like. I obviously I'm a huge fan of sativas. I I like the I like the energy they give me and I like the way that my mind works when I'm using them. I don't like indicas. Indicas just make me sad. Um, hybrids, like anything with indica in it, just makes me really kind of sad and mopey. <laughs> there was one night the other night, Casey had a really late show and I was done working and I'm upstairs watching TV and I was like, oh, we still have, we have that indica flower. I'm going to try that out. So I ground some up, put some in my little, my little water pipe bubbler guy there, had a few big rips on it. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is great. I feel good. I feel great. I started like feeling really heavy and like mopey. And then I started like gently sobbing when I was thinking about my friends and like thinking about like YouTube and being a public person and all the mistakes I've made and like when I fuck things up, like when I fucked up the audio, I guarantee you tonight if I tried to partake in some Indica, all I would focus on is the bad video that I shot tonight and it would literally make me like s gently sob, like sad, like I, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I'm a sativa guy. I'm, I'm sativa. I'm sativa to the bone, sativa to the core. That's what I like. So I don't know. Let me know. Do, do any of my subscribers partake? This isn't something that I broadcast. I, I probably will never bring it up again unless there's an overwhelming response to see like, hey, you should get stoned and review that thermo tank. But do any of you partake? And if you do, I don't know. I, I like I like doing research. I like knowing uh, what my subscribers are into. Do you guys partake? If you do, cool. If you don't, you should, man. Or not. I don't care. I'm not the boss of you. Do whatever you want. You do you, you know? But yeah, I partake and, and it's cool and it's fun and I like it and it's legal and so it's cool. It's legal. And I'm not like, uh, you know, c crazy about it. Like, you know, when we went to Sweden, I, you know, I didn't partake. I didn't smoke anything the whole time I was in Sweden. I still had a wonderfully fantastic time. I slept great. I had fun and it was great. And it's something that uh, I'm thankful to know that it's something that I don't need. Like, it's not something that I like crave or desire really badly. Like if I go a couple days or a couple nights or like a week without it, I'm like, it's cool. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. It's whatever. I'll just, I'll just do it next time. I got plenty of life left and there's plenty of pot left. So I can kind of do that whenever I want, you know, I don't know. Now I'm just rambling, but again, yes, I partake. And so there you go. They, they, there you go. Again, if anybody has any getting to know Grim Green questions that aren't, hope, you know, too intrusive, just shoot them on over. Nick at GrimGreen.com. I like watching them. I like reading them. Send over videos if you have them. And uh, yeah, good times. Really good, really good question. Really good question. It probably won't be brought up again for a very long time, but that was a really good question. So now what I want to do after getting to know Grim Green is I would like to do some viewer mails. It's time for viewer mails. Da -na -na -na. Casey writes in and says, not, not my Casey, different Casey, boy Casey. Nick, this has nothing to do with vaping, but I feel like I've done my due diligence and searching for close to an hour before asking this one question. What cabinet is that in your office? I don't want to com be a complete poser, but I need that cabinet with Han Solo in my life. I was guessing it was an Ikea Billy with doors, but I need to know if Han is a vinyl sticker or a poster. I've been subscribed since 2011. I appreciate everything you do as always. Thank you for reading and let's keep on vaping. Casey from Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely, Casey. You are right. That is the Ikea Billy cabinet with doors and the poster was a gift from my brother. This is a poster. It was a door sized poster. So it was like this big wide poster and my brother gave it to me for my birthday like two years ago and I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I really want a place to put this. And so when we were at Ikea, um, we were looking at the Billy cabinet and I had the brilliant idea. I was like, oh, if we got the glass doors, I could cut Han Solo and just 
to slide him right in there and have Han Solo on this door of this cabinet. It's the best decision I've ever made. Thank you to my brother for the poster and thank you to Ikea for the Billy cabinet. But yeah, that's what that is, Casey. The Billy cabinet with a Han Solo Star Wars door poster that I cut to size and slid in between the glass and the backing. Anyway, thank you for writing in. Uh, yeah, this is Lee. I'm guessing his name is Lee. He writes in and says, uh, hello, Nick from the UK. Just a couple of questions for you. Uh, can you please tell me where I can purchase a Grim Army snapback? Everywhere is out of stock. Mm, yeah. I've also spoken to Herman Vapes regarding the Grim Green Edition Me 1. You responded on Instagram saying it could be a possibility that they would be stocking soon. So the question is, do we have any idea when? Uh, if it's not, in on Herman Vapes right now. I feel like it should be on Herman Vapes right now. I'm gonna do some uh, reconnaissance work here for you, Lee, and I'm gonna see what's up on Herman Vapes. Um, they did just make a Recoil Rebel order. Did everybody get to check out my Recoil Rebel video? Did everybody watch that? I think that's really cool. I'm really stoked on this atomizer. Of course, you know, it got, it got a bunch of hate from a bunch of idiots, but it's whatever. This, I mean, the same thing, the same exact thing happened when we released the original recoil, like word for word, people are saying the same thing about the original recoil. So it's whatever, it's gonna get some hate at the beginning. Um, I think it's a fantastic RDA, and if you haven't yet, yeah, definitely check out my video. But Herman Vapes has them in stock. Uh, they don't have the me ones though. Uh, sorry. No, they don't have the me ones on their website, but I've seen people in the UK hand checking the me one and they said they got it from Herman Vapes. So I'm not sure if Herman Vapes like sold out of them. That could be a strong possibility, but they're gonna, I think they should have some, we're going to get some more to them as well. We're going to be making more, uh, Grim Green Me ones. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for writing in. Feel free to use my name. Should I be super lucky and get read on the best day of the week? Thursday, bro. Yeah. Oh, and he sent a picture. You want your picture on the internet too? I'm going to put your picture in my video. <laughs> there you are, Lee. Anyway, thank you so much for writing in. Who else do we have here? Um, This is going to be a long one, but Ted wrote this in a while ago, and I have been dying to read it, and I keep overlooking it, and no longer will I overlook it. Ted wrote in and says, Hey Nick, I would like to give you an observation from the older generation in helping to promote vaping as a means of the alternative to cigarettes and other forms of smoking. I will try to explain it in modern speak. Some of us old farts have been around for a very long time. The vaping community is dominated by the under 30 crowd. I'm sure there are vapors out there who publish videos that are over 50, but I haven't seen them yet. I'm not a dude nor a bro, nor do I wear my hat sideways, which to my upbringing looks ridiculous. I'm a Vietnam era vet who started smoking cigarettes at 13 and took up vaping four years ago to eliminate tobacco out of my life. In the army, I took up smoking a pipe to keep the moochers at bay due to that bumming cigarettes. No one ever asked, hey, can I bum a bowl from you? I smoked a pipe from 1971 until 2013. I inhaled it like it was a direct lung of nicotine from a smokestack. Fortunately, I don't have any spots on my lungs for my prolonged use of pipe smoking. I'm in a minority there. There are so many men and women in my age bracket who live on oxygen tanks. Vaping is a way to eliminate or reduce the effects of tobacco. The problem is YouTube videos are dominated by the younger crowd who in many instances are complete and utter assholes. I would like to strangle the shit out of some of them. I could name them, but I won't. You can figure that out. We are the older generation. We don't know what this mod does as compared to this other mod or what tank goes best with that mod. What's the best wattage for this or tanks or atomizers? Who needs 200 watts of power? I don't need to fill the room with a cloud of smoke in one hit. You are driving the older generation away from va vaping. They see it as a younger generation thing and are turned off by vaping. You need to address this older generation, the old farts, grandpa and grandma. There is where the power of politics comes into saving vaping from extinction. The established power people who have made it to the top of the heap. Sure, all the companies cater to the younger crowd, but they are missing the real target group of the gray-haired army of old farts. Yes! Good lord! Gray-haired army of old farts. It goes on. That, I just wanted to clap in the middle because this is so good. Look at the video from one of your conventions. It is the same as the old timey smoke, as the old time smoke filled back rooms of old boy new network. 
What? Okay, I didn't quite follow that. Look at the video of one of your conventions. It is the same as the old time smoke filled back rooms of the old boy network. Nothing but a cloud of smoke and everybody having a good time babbling in new speak. Get the older generation on your side. That is imperative. No one is approaching vaping geared toward the gray haired generation. You could save a lot of lives and have a powerful group of people on your side. I vape an eye stick 50 watt mod with a cubist tank. That's all I need to fulfill my needs. I get good taste and a good cloud. Get us on your side. You could have a very powerful ally. I started vaping watching your videos and Pete Basardo's channel. Good stuff if you set me on the right track. Good stuff and it set me on the right track. Yes, I went from store-bought e-cigs to my iStick and it's been a great journey. Thank you for your videos, but now I see you changing. Longer videos that ramble on things the gray-haired generation doesn't give a shit about. Maybe split it up. If you made th this far reading this, then thank you. I hope I made my point. Keep vaping, my friend. If vaping is killed, I go back to tobacco. Don't let that happen. You can, if you can do it, anyone can. Thanks. Absolutely, Ted. You know what? Here's the thing. Um, you're right. I don't, I don't even know what else to say, Ted. You are right. I am not the uh, spokesperson for vaping, and I'm especially not any sort of spokesperson for vaping people on YouTube, but you're right. I am, I'm 40 years old at this point, but I also have tattoos on my throat and full sleeve tattoos on my arm, and I wear a hat that's, that's kind of pointed up a little bit, and I have a Warren Zevon shirt that says... Send lawyers, guns, and money. The shit has hit the fan. So yeah, I can see how someone clicking on this video, on my video, going, uh, who's this douchebag? Like, they, that's what happens. It would be like, who's this douchebag? Who's that guy with the tattoos? Who's this aging hipster with his super cool hat and his hipster glasses? I could see that. I could definitely see that. I like to think that after people get to know me, you can kind of see that I'm not really super that guy. It's just how I look. And you're right. There are not any uh, YouTubers catering towards, uh, you know, the gray haired army, as you call it. Um, I wouldn't even, I mean, Phil Basardo does great videos, but they're very, very long. And he said he doesn't like long videos where he talk about shit that, that they don't give a shit about. Someone needs to do it. It's not me. I'm not the person to do that. But I think that's a good challenge for anybody out there. Start a YouTube and cater towards the older generation of people. Don't have it be millennial and jump cutty and loud music and death metal like I have, make it like normal. Make it like a fucking Apple video. You know what I mean? Like when Apple releases a new product and you have that, you know, the guy with the t-shirt, he's like, what we wanted to do was just completely rethink the way that we video chat. And then it's like a slow, like rotating thing. I don't know, maybe not that far, but I agree with you, Ted. I agree with you and I'm sorry I'm not doing more to help you out. I do think that there needs to be someone on YouTube that that caters to not the 30 and under crowd. Like, all of us do. We all do it, dude. We all do it. I absolutely agree with you. So thank you. Thank you, Ted, for writing in, and I'm glad I finally got that in. I'm going to do one more viewer mail because that was a little bit of a long one. I'm going to do one last viewer mail. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro, you have a broken mod. I don't I mean, I not even need to read this last viewer mail. Uh, he writes in and says, uh, hey, Nick, I have a Smoant Battlestar 200, and I have some weird problems with it. It keeps firing me, keeps firing without me pressing the fire button, and it fires at 200 watts straight, even if you you put it on one watt. I hope you can reply or put this in a vlog. Feel free to say my name if you can pronounce it. No, I can definitely not. Anu, Anu Camp, Anu Camp, Anu Camp. I can't, I can't pronounce your name. Why'd you challenge me like that? You know, I couldn't do it. P.S. I've been subscribed to you for the past two years and started watching your videos more because you are funny and you make vaping sound fun. Because of you, I left smoking and I started with the Evic VT Mini and now I have a huge collection of vapes. Yeah, fuck yeah. P.P.S. Sorry this is so long, but there's more good stuff I wanted to say. But for now, thank you for making my life better and helping others as well. Keep up the good work. Absolutely. Anu, 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 Anu. Man, so yeah, um, you definitely have a broken mod. Uh, no mod should ever fire without you pressing the fire button, unregulated or regulated, especially because if it's firing at 200 watts constantly, even if you put it down to one watt, that is, uh, 
a broken mod. The only option you have besides going to Smoant and trying to get them to support their product, which might be a little bit on the difficult side, is if you can somehow reflash your firmware on there. I know there's a lot of mods that do that. I know some Joytech mods do it, and I know some eLeaf mods do it, but you can completely reinstall the, you know, whatever firmware upgrade. Like you can reflash it and it will reinstall the firmware onto the chip. That might take care of that if that's an option. Otherwise, you're gonna need to contact Smoant. And I know that sucks because a lot of Chinese companies like uh, Smoant and Joytech and UL and a lot of these companies, um, they're difficult, especially Wismec. I've heard horror stories about Wismec, like trying to people trying to get their relos fixed or their relos replaced. They don't, um, they don't really care a whole hell of a lot about the thirty dollar mod that they sold you. You know what I mean? Because I guarantee you, Smoant since the Battlestar two hundred has probably re released like four or five other mods and they probably got five or six other mods planned to be released throughout the rest of the year. They're just constantly releasing products. So when yours breaks, you go, well, I could go through the trouble of getting this replaced or fixed or what, what new does Smoant have? What new mods do they have that, that I could buy? So <sighs> I hate that. That sucks. That really sucks. In fact, no, that's not good enough for me. Uh, I have a Smoant Battlestar. I have a Smoant 200 watt Battlestar here, and I'm an, I will send it to you. I will send it to you. I'll sell it to you for two bucks. That's what I'll do. I know I have one somewhere. <clears throat> okay, let me double check. Yeah, I have this. I have this guy. This is the Smoant Battlestar, right? Is this the 200? Sorry, it's like, oh, can you see it? This is it, right? Smoant Battlestar 200 watt. This is yours if you want it. I don't know where you live, but I will try to get it to you. And if not, that sucks, man. I hate it. I hate it when people spend money on a mod and it fucking breaks and they get like, well, yeah, I spent, you know, 60 bucks on this mod and I got three weeks out of it before it broke. Like, fuck, that sucks, man. I never really uh, tried out this Smoant Battlestar. I did a first impressions of it a long time ago and then I never really kind of used it after that. But if you want this, uh, email me back, let me know, and uh, I'll save it for you. I'll save it just for you just for you. Anyway, yeah, cool. Like I said before, if anybody has any viewer mails that they'd like to uh, see answered on here, they could definitely do that. Send me an email, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark it viewer mail and I will read it and I will file it. And some of them have little stars next to them like David. Yeah, next week we might be reading David's email because it has a little star. Someone named Tony wanted me to marry them, but that's going to be a... Uh that's going to be a viewer mail for another day. Anyway, what's next? Let's get over to my vlog notes. What's next? Viewer mail. Uh, juice. Oh, good. I have a good juice picked out. It's time to taste some juice. All right. So the juice I have tonight is from Sapphire? Sapphire. I picked this up in Ohio at the Ohio Vape Expo. Uh, this is Blackberry Moonshine, handcrafted in Tennessee. Sapphire Blackberry Moonshine. I was going through my cabinet and I thought, wow, that just sounds delicious to me right now. And I really want to try it. Smells of blackberries for sure. It smells, I'm, I'm interested to see where the moonshine component comes into this. Because like if it's just blackberries, then it's just like, okay, well, that's just blackberry. That's not blackberry moonshine. Moonshine has a, like a very unique, distinct, you know, rubbing alcohol type of flavor to it. So I'm interested to see how this tastes. Okay. Tastes like, uh, okay, I'm not gonna lie, Sapphire. I met this couple and they were, they had some juice and they offered me a bottle and I said, you know what? You guys are really cool, really nice. I would be stoked to try out your juice. Blackberry Moonshine, right now, that lick off of my knuckle tasted like really bad cough syrup. I'm hoping, ugh, I'm hoping with all my hopes that that's not the way that this flavor is, that it's actually like a good Blackberry Moonshine flavor, but, uh, could end up tasting like cough syrup. Anyway, we're going to be vaping this on the dead rabbit because I just re-wicked it. I haven't done a review for this yet. How have I not done a review for the dead rabbit yet? Such a good RDA. As soon as I get back from ECC, first thing I want to do is a review for the dead rabbit because I think it's so great. Oh, maybe I'm having an idea. What if I'm going to review the aura with Daniel? What if I reviewed the dead rabbit 
with Vaping Heathen because he's going to be at ECC. <laughs> ah, I love this idea. I love this idea so much. I'm so excited to meet Heathen, you guys. You have no idea. I think we're going to I think we're going to get along really well. And even if we don't get along really well, he seems like a nice guy. Nice enough guy to talk about Star Wars with. Anyway, I've got this uh freshly wicked, so I'm just going to drip a whole mess of this on here and uh yeah, we're going to vape it up. This is uh running on that dual 18650 uh you know, unregulated Evoke mod from Alter Ego Creations. This is a, this is a fantastic mod. In fact, if this G is good. This is a setup that I'm going to take with me to ECC for sure. Let's get this on here. Let's smell the vapor. You ever do that? You ever smell the vapor? It kind of, it kind of smells blackberry-ish. All right, dead rabbit, blackberry moonshine. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. That's a, uh, okay. I see where they're going with this. This was this is not a uh, cough syrupy flavor. Definitely not a cough syrupy flavor. Let me take a bunch more pulls, probably set to some sort of music, and then I'm gonna put a filter over it, and I'm gonna sit back there, and I'm just gonna vape for a little bit, and you guys have to watch it. You have no choice. What are you gonna do, fast forward? You don't know when it ends. You could skip right past the end. That's the joy of the vaping music montage. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm in such a weird fucking mood tonight. I'm sorry, just, I'm gonna vape this, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it like it's perfectly normal thing <coughs> mm. pardon me I don't know what it is with uh, juices lately feeling a little bit throaty. If I'm being honest, this Blackberry Moonshine, I mean, I mean, I was vaping a lot. You know, that's not, I don't normally just like pull rip after rip after toot after pull after whatever you call it, after one after the other like that. When It's only when I'm evaluating a juice and sometimes it gets a little throaty. It's not cough syrupy in any way, which I was really, really surprised about. It's a very accurate Blackberry. It's a Blackberry that's kind of uh, sweet and tart a little bit, and I swear to God, I can taste like an earthy component, like the sticks or something, like the blueberry or the or the blackberry like branch. There's like this weird earthy component to it, and that may be like what the blueberry moonshine means, but it's, or blackberry, I keep saying blueberry, blackberry moonshine, I kind of get this like blackberry earthy flavor from it. it it's nice, it's quite nice. It's weird. God, it's so weird. That is a really weird, really weird, unique juice. I almost get like a plum flavor in it. In fact, I'm surprised. I'll be surprised if there's not some sort of plum component to this. If it's like blackberry plum, sort of like these low fruity notes and then like this earthy flavor over it. That's what I get, and it's, I'm shocked. I'm honestly shocked that I don't get any cough syrup from this. It's a very, it's like an earthy component to it. It's really bizarre. I'm gonna just, I, I have to keep vaping it. As my office slowly fills up with vapor, I guess I'm breaking all the rules of that article from earlier. Yeah, wow, weird, really weird. It's tasty, but weird. Just be prepared. It's tasty, but weird. And of course, I'll post a link down in the description to where you can check out Sapphire Blackberry Moonshine. Like I said, I met them in Ohio. Very, very cool people. And they offered up some juice for me to taste. So I gladly accepted it, took it home, and now it's on video. That's... That's how all this works, man. Anyway, let's wrap up this vlog right now. I'm ready to get to some favorite comments of the week. I always just start chuckling before I even read anything. Anyway, favorite comment of the week number one comes from a dude named Ohm Slice who says hashtag drip life or hashtag splooge life or hashtag paint life or maybe even hashtag flood life smiley face. Sure, all of those things. I prefer bleh life. I feel like that's the sound of juice being poured. It's bleh. That's it. It's not anything else. It's not flood. It's not paint. I guess sometimes you paint a little bit. Bleh. Bleh, 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 bleh life. 
<laughs> comment of the week number two dude named nick watts wrote it and said i really liked that quick time lapse down low build part smiley face emoji i just liked my own comment <laughs> And it's true. There's just one like on it, and it's his own like, and that's hilarious to me, and I don't know why that's so hilarious to me. Comment of the week number three. Tyler writes in and says, is Nick going crazy? Um, no. I don't believe that I am going crazy. If I do go crazy, um, you will be the first person I tell, Tyler. I will, I will tell you first. I will DM you on Instagram or DM you on YouTube and be like, Tyler, yeah. It's happening. Oh wow, I don't really have a whole hell of a lot of favorite comments of the week. Comment, favorite comment of the week number four, Zach writes in and says, Hot Sweetness is my stripper name, which I know you're not a stripper, Zach, but if there are any uh, strippers, I don't know, they, they don't, stripper isn't like the preferred nomenclature, is it? It's like a adult entertainer or a dancer or adult dancer, which I'm totally okay, trust me, <laughs> I am totally okay with cool, with all of that, if that's what you want to do. Hot Sweetness, someone, I must have one subscriber somewhere that's like an exotic dancer, please name yourself Hot Sweetness, that would make my day. Oh no, is that really it? That's all my favorite comments of the week? Oh, I had this one here, Steve wrote in and said, may your voops be strong and satisfying. You know what, Steve? They always, always are. So, before we wrap up this vlog, I do want to announce the giveaway winner, it was this guy, Ken. Kenneth. Kenneth just left a comment and said, awesome vlog. I would like to win $2 sale. There you go, Kenneth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that was really kind of out of nowhere. Anyway, absolutely, Kenneth, you won. Hit me up, uh, shoot me an email, nick at grimgreen.com. I'm gonna verify that you are who you say you are via photo ID, and I will ship you the uh, $2 sale box. In fact, I wanna show you real quick what's going in the $2 sale box. First of all, yeah, Watofo Flow Tank is going in the box. I also have a purple Icon RDA, Mike Vapes, Vandy Vape, that's going in the box. I have a gold reload RDA. That's yours, Kenneth. That's going in the box. I'm not sure if this will hold a whole hell of a lot of interest for you, but I think it's very cool. This was a cool fire version four limited edition uh, silver. It's shiny silver and it's got the Grim Army logo on it. So that's going in the box as well as a Geek Vape Tsunami mech kit. That is also going on the box. And finally, that new Joy Tech Eki, the Eki Pro Core Motor Guy. So you got you got three mods, you got a whole bunch of you got three mods and three toppers. You got three mods and four toppers. So congratulations, Kenneth. This is all yours. I'm gonna pack this up in a box and uh, send it off to you. Well, as soon as I get back from ECC, as soon as I get back from ECC. In fact, I really liked this two dollar sale, and I think in the next vlog that I do at home, yeah, we might do another two dollar sale. We might see if I remember. We might do another two dollar sale. Of course, you can always get $2 sales on my Patreon. My Patreon isn't something that I have... I've only mentioned it once, actually, but I do have a Patreon, Patreon Grim Green. I do a lot more $2 sales over there, as well as a lot of exclusive content, like a private Instagram account where I do live streaming every week. Yeah, that's that's a thing. That's a thing that's over there. So if you feel the need, go over and check that out. Otherwise, let me just take one quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. Nope, 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 nope. All looks good, so I'm gonna take my Leaning Tree Wood Mods, my Achilles RDA filled with rainbow sherbet in the dark, and I'm just gonna vape my face off and, and relax for the rest of this evening. Anyway, I will see hopefully some of you at ECC. ECC, I'll put a link, uh, pardon me, down in the description. Come hang out, dude, it's gonna be great. We're gonna have a squad booth. We're gonna be hanging out with uh, Ruby Roo and, and, and Jess Marie and Twisted Messes and Coil Turd's gonna be there and I'm gonna be there and so many great, wonderful people Josh is gonna be there, you guys. Ruby's husband, Josh, is gonna be there. You need to meet him. He's one of the coolest people I've ever known. Anyway, ECC Expo, hope to see you there. If not, I'll see you back here next week for a bunch of ECC-related videos, as well as, uh, you know, another vlog. I got no travel planned in September, so it's gonna be full-on videos, 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 vlogs, and videos, and more videos, and more vlogs. And then, uh, you know, we got something super cool coming up in October, and we're gonna announce that shortly after ECC, but if you are on the West Coast in October, you definitely want to know about this. It's going to be hopefully really fucking awesome. We're going to announce that after ECC. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. That's what I got for today, and I, I messed that whole end part up. Keep on vaping.
Yeah, it's a bummer with the regulations that are going on right now, but, um, you know, our friendship just grows deeper, so. Yeah.